easy to read spooky tales. Don't eat that. In the garden, part one. I have a job for you today, my mother said. But Leon and Marcus are coming over. I told her, they can wait. She said, "What do I have to do?" I asked. "Cut the grass," she said. "I'll get the lawnmower." I waited in the garden under a cherry tree. The cherries were red and ripe. I reached to pick one. "Don't eat that!" Mom shouted, and she gave me the lawnmower. Soon, Leon and Marcus came. You'll have to wait. I won't be long, I said. Marcus reached for a cherry. Don't eat that! I yelled at him. Why not? Marcus asked. I don't know. I answered. My mom said not to eat that. I know why, said Leon. It's because a small creature might live in this cherry tree. It could jump on you and make you shrink. Then you'd be small like a baby. What? I said, and stopped cutting the grass. Okay, said Leon. I'll tell you a story. The fig tree, Leon's story. There was once a boy called Daku. He lived with his tribe in the bush. Every time Daku went hunting with his friends, his grandmother would say, "Don't eat figs." She said human-like creatures lived in the fig trees. They would catch people, swallow them, and spit them up over and over again. The people got smaller each time. Until they too became small creatures. But Daku laughed at the stories. Such creatures don't exist, he would say to his friends. Grandma only says that to scare me so that I'll obey. One day, Daku and his friends were hunting far from their tribe's camp. They were hot and thirsty. Nearby stood a big fig tree, bent low with fruit. Look, called Daku. Let's go and eat some. No way, said Daku's friends. What if some creature does live in the tree top? We're going back home. Never mind, thought Daku. All the more figs for me to eat. Daku went to the fig tree, picked some fruit, and ate it. It was juicy and sweet. Whoosh! Something dropped onto his back. Daku toppled over. A red creature with a huge head stared at him with hungry eyes. Its fingers and toes were like small suction cups. Before Daku could run, the creature pounced on him. Daku felt stinging pain all over his body. He was too weak to resist. Opening its toothless jaw, the creature slurped him whole, only to spit him out seconds later. Daku felt dizzy and strange. Suddenly, he remembered something else. Grandmother said, "The creature only eats people if they are alive." Daku closed his eyes and pretended to be dead. The creature walked around him, and poked him with a stick, but Daku didn't move. He lay still until night came. Finally. The creature left and climbed to the tree top. Daku jumped up and ran 
until he reached the camp. What happened? asked his grandmother. You ate some figs, didn't you? How did you know? asked Daku. You're smaller. That's how. It's lucky you escaped. Next time, listen to what I tell you. And from then on, Daku did. Wow, said Marcus. Did Daku go back to kindergarten because he was so small? Daku was a hunter, said Leon. He didn't go to school. I wonder if he ever got back to his normal size, I said. Maybe, but only if he stayed away from fig trees, said Marcus. I know why we should not eat these cherries, I said. If we eat them, we could turn into parrots or donkeys. What do you mean? asked Leon. Listen to this, I said. The Storm My Story Avi and Ben were brothers. Late one afternoon, they went to visit their aunt in the next village. Suddenly, a storm broke out. The boys spotted a small cottage by the road. The door was open. From inside, two big dogs ran to the door barking. Then, two women appeared in the doorway. Don't worry they said, and called the dogs back. The boys thought the women looked kind. Please, may we stay the night? Avi asked them. Yes, the women replied. Come in and have a bite to eat. When the boys sat down at the table, Ben noticed something strange. One woman was stirring boiling soup with her fingers, while the other one took bread from the oven with her bare hands. Ben was scared. They must be witches, he thought. The women put soup and bread in front of the boys. Don't eat that, Ben whispered to Avi. I think we'd better be going, said Ben, pushing the food away. Nonsense, said one woman. You must stay. The storm is getting worse. She snapped her fingers, and the dogs blocked the way. You can eat in the morning, the woman said. Avi and Ben climbed up to the loft but did not sleep. During the night, they watched through the railing to see what the women were doing. Around midnight, one of the women opened the door and sent the dogs out. Fetch, she said. Moments later, four donkeys entered the cottage. The women took their saddles off and the donkeys turned into men. The monstrous dogs watched the men carry in water and cut wood for the fire. Then the men were fed soup and bread. With every bite, they looked more like donkeys. The women put their saddles on and the dogs herded the donkeys into the barn. In the morning, the women laid soup and bread on the table. You must eat before you go, they ordered. But we are late, said Ben. Perhaps we could eat it on the way, said Avi. All right, the women agreed. They handed the food over. The dogs followed the boys out. Thank you for the food, said the boys and they ran with the dogs racing after them. No matter how fast the boys ran, the dogs kept up behind them. The bread! 
called Ben to Avi. Throw it! They threw it to the dogs. When they turned back, the dogs had finished the bread and were turning into donkeys. Lucky we didn't eat that, the brothers told each other. They kept running all the way to their aunt's village, but on the way back home, they took a different path. I wonder what was in that bread, said Marcus. I think the witches spiced it with a potion, I said. They also had one for turning people into pigs and chickens. I bet your mom told you not to eat the cherries because she is going to make you cherry pancakes, Marcus said. Do you want to hear a story? It's about a girl who was told not to eat pancakes. Uncle Wolf Marcus Story Once there was a little girl named Bella. One day, she asked her mother to make her some pancakes. But mother was so poor, she didn't even have a skillet. Go to Uncle Wolf's house and ask him to lend us his frying pan said mother. Bella went to Uncle Wolf's house. What do you want? he asked. Mama sent me to borrow your skillet, said Bella. Uncle Wolf opened the door and gave it to her. Tell your mother to return it full of pancakes, said Uncle Wolf. When Bella reached home, she told her mother what Uncle Wolf had said. Mother made two pancake stacks. One was for Bella, and one was for Uncle Wolf. After Bella ate her pancakes, Mother said, Now, take the pan of pancakes back to Uncle Wolf, and don't eat any of them. Along the way, Bella began to sniff the pancakes. They smell wonderful. I think I will have one, she thought. She ate one, then another. Soon the pancakes were all gone. So Bella scraped some mud from the road, patted it flat, and made a stack of mud cakes. She reached Uncle Wolf's house and gave him the mud cakes. Uncle Wolf bit into one. Yuck! He spat it out. What is this? He looked at Bella and said, Tonight I will punish you. Bella ran to tell her mother what Uncle Wolf had said. Mother closed all the windows and doors, but she forgot about the chimney. When night came and Bella went to bed, she could hear Uncle Wolf. I'm going to punish you. I'm right outside. Then Bella heard, clump, clump, on the ceiling. I'm going to punish you. I'm on the roof. Bella hid under the covers. I'm going to punish you. I'm in the chimney, he said. Bella curled up in the corner. I'm going to punish you. I'm in your room. Bella held her breath. Now I'm at your bed. In the Garden, Part 2 Leon, shouted Marcus. You're not listening. What are you doing? He asked. Leon was standing under the tree. Leon was standing under the tree, squishing the fallen cherries with his foot. Look, the cherries are moving, Leon called. We went to take a look. Leon was right. The cherries were moving because they were full of worms. 
The worms were fat and white, and they wiggled all around. What's wrong? I asked Marcus. I'm going to be sick, he said. He ate those cherries when you were cutting grass, Leon told me. My mother came into the garden. Aren't you finished yet? She asked. What's taking you so long? Leon feels sick. I told her, he ate the wormy cherries. I should have told you about the worms," said my mother. "But I didn't think you needed to hear the details. Anyway, I made you some snacks. Are you coming in?" she asked. "Thanks, mom," I said. But we're not very hungry now. After a word, what do you think happens next in Uncle Wolf's story? How can Bella save herself? Can she make things right? What can she offer to do? Have fun inventing the ending of the story yourself.